Good evening, everybody. This is the official unofficial CWF Mid Atlantic Worldwide After Show for episode 150. A new challenger arises to uh, challenge Trevor Lee for his undisputed now CWF Mid Atlantic Worldwide Heavyweight Championship. I shouldn't say Worldwide Heavyweight Championship, just, just the CWF Mid Atlantic Heavyweight Championship. I gotta get it right. Everybody on Twitter will at me about that one. As if I hadn't been added enough in the last 24 hours with that picture that's circulating. Jeez. Oof. <laughs> Is Joe gonna go on a rant this evening? That's a question I just got asked on Twitter. Maybe. I do have a few things I'd like to say, but it was a good episode of Worldwide tonight. The commentary was a, was okay. Um... Audio was okay. Uh, production was good. Aspect ratio was good. Um, I, I can't really find a bad thing to say about tonight's episode, really. It kicked off with uh, John Schuyler and Mace Lee versus the returning Keith Mack and Aaron Biggs. I thought it was a hell of a tag team match. Schuyler was playing to the crowd like crazy that night. Um, it was a funny picture. It was. I laughed my ass off. Anyway, we'll we'll get there. Um, I I thought it was a really good tag match to kick off the episode of Worldwide this week. I was kind of I was kind of wondering where they were gonna f- fit everything in as far as you know what sequence of matches we're gonna air win, but I thought it was really good tonight. Um, it was good to see Keith uh, Keith Mack back. We haven't seen Mack back in the uh, Mack in the uh, in CWF in quite a while. Um, I want to say not since the Rumble, or if he was even in the Rumble. Um, so it was good to see him back. I don't like what they're doing with Biggs, having him have these barrage of tag team partners, different tag partners every week, or you know. At the, but we'll we'll get there. We'll we'll get there with Biggs. Trust me, you'll get there with Biggs. Skyler and Mace Lee, an uh, odd t- teaming, but it worked. I thought um, Lee continues to Mace Lee continues to impress me week after week. Um, smoking hot pick. <laughs> oh man, I'm never gonna live that one down. <laughs> never. <laughs> anyway, um, it was a really good tag match to kick us off. I I liked it. You know, Aaron Biggs. You know, it's a murder. It's good to hear that every week. Every every time that Biggs wrestles, it's, it's like, you know, Cecil has to say that. It's it's wonderful. Um, so, yeah, really good tag match to kick us off. Not a bad thing to really say about it. That led into Chet Sterling versus Otto Schwanz. And uh, had some fun in the chat room. By the way, if you're not watching live on Twitch, if you're watching the YouTube version of this after show... You need to get yourself over to Twitch Live on Wednesday nights. We have really we have a lot of fun in that chat room as we were tonight. Um, so I I liked uh, I liked the Chet versus Auto match. Rumor is is that Auto's gold got, Auto's gold chain got stolen after the match. We can neither confirm nor deny that. But I thought these two did really good at Chet getting the surprise win. They made it seem like it was a huge upset. And here's the thing I I. I is it an upset, really? I mean, here's a guy who's won the Weber Cup, who has a title match in his back pocket still, and and probably about this time last year was one of the hottest guys in the company. And now it's a surprise that he's beat Otto Schwanz. I mean, nothing, nothing, not taking away anything from Otto. And I know the story of the match is, hey, it's Auto. Auto towers over Chet, but come on, still? Even still. I, I think that when you look at the entire roster compared to where it was about this time last year, it's come a long way, and now it seems like it's kind of, I don't know, dwindling. Um, I mean, you look at the way Kane and, and Ethan... Alexander Sharp were booked at the end of last year, both single stars. Yes, I know you got the Cronodal Cup coming, so they got to team up. But it, I don't know, man. I'm not liking the the overall feel of, of where this roster is right now. I'm not the only one that says it. 
I mean, it's not like I'm outside taking a poll, but I mean, you know, I've been told that by a number of people. It's like a lot of the roster has, has quieted down, like cooled, cooled the sheets a little bit. And maybe they're doing that for a reason. I mean, it, it just seems like everybody but Trevor Lee is not as hot as they were at the end of 2017. Um, but anyway, I, I liked the match. I liked, uh, I liked Chet getting the win and then rolling out of the ring all shocked. It was, it was, it was really good. Really good. <laughs> it was worse this time last year. It was worse this time last year. Because this time last year is when, I mean, it was around this time. It wasn't, you know, but. Okay, I'll put it to you this way. If you compare this roster here to after Absolute Justice last year, I don't know. This time last year, everybody was hooting and hollering over Chip and Trevor. So, I mean, that that kind of put a haze over the entire thing and other things were happening with people too. And once that got done and out of the way... Ethan got a chance to step up, and Nick Richards stepped up in a big way last year, and just the whole ride, it felt like they were really getting somewhere. And yes, I know, different Booker, okay? And I'll call call a spade a spade on, it's a different Booker. I'm not afraid to say it. Yeah, I mean, if you look at, like, from Battlecade till now, whoo. Is it, you know, I'm not I'm not saying that, you know, I'm not saying what a good portion of the fan base is saying right now, wants to say right now, which that's another topic I want to cover tonight, is how we can reunite this fan base. I shouldn't have to be talking about that, but I, I, I feel like I need to. But let's get through worldwide first. I, I again, I like the fact that Chet got the win, but does Chet need to look so shocked? Alexa, why is Kane stepping on Kane's? Or why is Ethan stepping on Kane's heat? Ooh, 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 ooh. Let me ask Siri. I, I got an iPhone here. Let me see. Can I ask Siri? Let's see what Siri has to say. I don't trust that Alexa. You know, I, I recently got a job working for the uh, Siri company. I'm not allowed to say who, but the, I'll just say it's the Siri company. Let's ask. Uh, Siri, why is Ethan stepping on Kane's heat? She's searching. And it leads me to uh, bend and shape candy canes. Kane's going to like that. Straightening a shank for a walking stick using a hot air gun. I'm not making this up. Straightening a shank for a walking stick using a hot air gun. Slideshow. Tips for choosing Kane's Mayo Clinic. Does Kane need the Mayo Clinic? Who wouldn't want to step on Kane? Mini Jacks Teller there. Oh, hey now, don't don't be. I, I'm a Sons of Anarchy fanatic. Don't be don't be dissing Jacks Teller there, okay? Um, and then the last one that Siri does is Kids for Independence. That's weird. Okay. Anyway, Siri has no idea why Ethan is stepping on Kane's heat, um, but it's obvious that that's happened. Man, has that happened? Um, I'm a, yeah, I'm a huge Sons of Anarchy fan. Don't, season six and seven, I can do without. I'll admit, the last season sucked. But anyway, um, but I, I, the next match was Cool J and the Dirty Daddy taking on the Dawsons with the tag titles. I kind of liked the, the Dawsons promo before the match, stating that they went and tore up a Win Dixie. Golly. 
I cannot remember. Let me see. It must have been. I want to say it was 2001 the last time I stepped foot in Winn-Dixie. I miss Winn-Dixie. Winn-Dixie used to be a hell of a grocery store. Their, uh, their brand of soda, what was it called? Check? Damn good soda. Why are we talking about Kane's heat he wasn't on this week? It's just something that, that you know people have noticed. It doesn't matter if he's on this week or not. By the way, hello, Taylor. Thank you for joining us. Um, and I, it's, it's one of the things that people's notice, and that's what this after show is here for, to talk about things happening in the fandom and in the fan base, I guess, and even on the show. Um, I wish they had a Winn-Dixie, man, I miss it. I miss the hell out of Winn-Dixie, I can't lie, I'm going to say it again. Um, yes, we almost m- must talk about Kane, uh, and, but, uh, we almost, we will I miss Piggly Wiggly. We actually have a... We have one Piggly Wiggly in Danville. We used to have two of them. And then the pig, one of the Piggly Wigglies, the one that was closest to me, actually, um, closed and is now a Walmart neighborhood market. They bought the land that the Piggly Wiggly sat on and tore it down and built up a whole new thing. But we still have one Piggly Wiggly left. It was cheap. It was very cheap. Um, they're not the cleanest of stores if you find one. But anyway. They clown, cl- closed the one in Roanoke. Wow, okay. Danville, I think, is the only one left in Virginia. And you got to go to North Carolina to find the rest. But uh, Winn-Dixie still has a... Uh, welcome to Grocery Store Talk. I wish we... Uh, our doors are closed like 12... Ours closed like 20 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Twitch reminded you to be respectful and not bash or be rude. Anyway, um, but I I think that Winn-Dixie is still in existence. They are primarily in Florida and southern Georgia, I want to say. Man, that makes me want to drive down there now. Actually, speaking of Florida grocery stores, Publix has started to expand up into Virginia. They don't have them in Danville yet. I wish they did. I love Publix. Good sandwiches. Anyway, anyway, Cool J, good promo before the match. Good promo before the match. Um, and uh, and and Cool J and Dirty Daddy. Cool J showed me a lot here. Didn't see as much Dirty Daddy as I'd like to. Although I did like how he was really laying those forearms in. I was kind of worried about some of the camera shots in this match. The one where, um. Dirty Daddy and Cool J have the Dawson's, uh, I believe it was Dave, giving him the 10 punches in the corner. Um, I was kind of worried about the cameraman being right there, but man, it turned out really good. I got to put the cameraman over these two Chapel Hill shows. I really hope it kind of carries over into the next set of shows, which is the uh, Green with Envy shows. Um, I will say that Josh Bear, Josh Scrappy Bear, was uh, in charge of the floor camera for those shows. So hopefully we, we, we get some decent shots out of the, out of that. Um, and uh, But yeah, the, the tag match was really good. I, I like the finish. I like the fact that Cool J got killed a couple of times. Dirty Daddy continues on a losing streak. Um, will we see that heel turn? That's the thing that kills me is will we see that heel turn down the road? We did not see it at Chapel Hill. Um, it was the other Josh? Josh Bear was down at the Sportatorium for the last set of shows. I know. I thought I should. I, I remember shaking hands with him and telling him, "Hey, welcome back," because I hadn't seen him in a while. The cameraman swinging to the left to catch Dave and swing back to the right to be back at the ring. Yeah. Uh, I gotta say it. That one floor camera guy, man. Oof. Then again, I'm not sitting here in an editing bay editing them. So, it's John Miller, Snooty is booty. Um, Snooty wasn't even on tonight. But uh, I, I like the tag match overall. I like the tag. The Dawson's are keeping their win, you know, their winning streak and got that Cronodal Cup coming up. I, I believe it was um, Jason Gallo of uh, American Lucha Designs um, suggested that the Dawson, that maybe the Dawson brothers should defend their titles in every match in the tournament that they're in. I, I like that idea. 
I really do. Speaking of American Lucha Designs, let's give a shout out to my, our sponsors here. Um, if you have any kind of engraving that needs to be done, again, I say this every week, you know, spring ball season is coming up. If you need to have those participation trophies engraved, the, the, the fine people over at Bullock's Engraving in Henderson, North Carolina can help you. Just head on over to Bullock'sEngraving.com and uh, mention that you heard us on the after show. You get 10% off your order, guys. That's Bullock'sEngraving.com and American Lucha Designs. Hey, they designed my t-shirts, which if you want to purchase one, just uh, send me a DM on Twitter. I'd be glad to help you out. Um, if you need any graphic design work done, if you're a wrestler who needs uh, merchandise made or maybe even a, a logo for your gear or whatnot, uh, the boys over at American Lucha Designs can hook you up. Visit their newly revamped website at, Amer at AmericanLuchaDesigns.com. Um, the Dirty Daddy Heel Turn. I, I'm sure that John Miller is, is uh, his theory was uh, was not proven, and that uh, Dirty Daddy did not turn heel in Chapel Hill. I was looking forward to that man. I was like, man, he should so cost Snooty that match, or at least had tried to, but didn't happen. Um, but no, no Dirty Daddy heel turn. The frustration continues with him. So uh, who knows? Will we see it down the line? I, I, I hope so. It's been needed for a while now, man. I, I want to say it's been, it's been needed. Golly, probably since the Rumble, if not way before then. But uh, then we had Trevor Lee versus Donnie Dollars, and 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 uh, man, I don't know. The matches that they aired, you know, of course they aired them out of sequence, but because this was not the last match in Chapel Hill. But that crowd, man, that crowd was dead by the time this match took place. They were worn out. They were ready to see Snooty and cheer for Snooty, and I guess they were saving all their energy for that match. Um, and and uh, what's up, Jason? Thank you for being here tonight. Um, and And... I, I like the match. I like Donnie Dollars coming out in his, what somebody called their Big Bubba Rogers gimmick. I like that. I like that a lot, actually. I, I, I wish he'd do that every time. Um, and and I, I like the match with Trevor Lee. It was just your typical Trevor Lee match. And that Lee, you know, it's it's your typical Trevor Lee match. Um. We got to convert Mario. Yeah, we do got to convert Mario over on the snooty is booty hashtag. But uh, that leads me to another point that I want to ask you guys tonight. Um, and I don't want to spoil it, but I will. I, I Minor spoiler here. Well, they announced it tonight. Trevor Lee faces John Schuyler next week on Worldwide. And that's a match that I was at live. Um, one of the people sitting next to me, I'm not going to name names. This was only their second, I believe. Um, Jason knows who I'm talking about, so Jason can back me up. It was only his second worldwide taping that he's been to, his second CWF show that he's been to. And the match is great. Don't get me wrong. The match is a good match. It's, it's your typical Trevor Lee match. And that's that's one of my topics here tonight is is the Trevor Lee title reign getting boring because one of these people, again, this guy was there, it was only probably a second taping ever. And he goes, at the end of the Skyler match, he looks at me and goes, It's just like the match I saw with Wilkins, but with ropes. Wow. I was taken back by that. I gotta admit, when when he said that, I was taken back because here's a guy who you know, this is only his second CWF show. He didn't go to Chapel Hill, but he did see the no ropes match. He was there live for it. And then he's there for the Skyler match, and he says, it's the same thing, but with ropes. What does that say about Trevor Lee's matches in CWF? 
you know, you had the no ropes match, which was okay. I mean, it wasn't my favorite match of all time, not by any means. My favorite Trevor Lee match of all time is still him and Chip Day from last year's Kernodal Cup. But, does it, is it getting stale? Is the title reign itself getting stale? Is it time? You know, it's easy to sit here and, as Lee Valiant pointed out to me on Twitter last week, shout out to Lee Valiant. It's easy for me to sit here in my comfy little office chair with the damn computer in front of my face and fantasy book. I get it. Stupid Mark Joe White. I get it. But, as a fan, Sorry, I have to reach for a cough drop. I've been battling a damn cold, guy, since probably Thursday of last week, so we're coming up on a week of this bullshit. But as a fan, I'm sitting here going, it's it's getting, you know, maybe maybe Fan X, who's only been to two shows, is right. And maybe, maybe, uh, Maybe uh, Jason can answer this. Did this guy ever watch pro wrestling before this? I mean, but... It, it, the thing is, here, and you bring up a, a good point there, Goon Recruiter. You bring up a good point. Stale is more accurate than boring. I agree with that. It's stale. And those were the words I used Saturday when, when we were all hanging around talking up at Queens of Combat. <laughs> And you say part of that is we haven't had him facing really good people from outside the promotion in a while. Why does it take people outside the promotion? That leads me to the second point. And the point that I kind of touched on is that this roster right now. That's the show of having every two weeks. It's tough to keep all the storylines fresh. I, I got it. I hate to have, have this, you know. I hate to do this, but WWE does it on a weekly fucking basis. And yes, WWE storylines are pretty much stale all the fucking time, but look at how it's been lately. The build to WrestleMania has actually been really freaking good. But, I know, it's apples and oranges. He was a WWE guy, not an indie guy. It doesn't matter, and it's still wrestling. It's still episodic wrestling. And when... But why does it take someone from the outside to do this? And, and I look at it this way. You got people that are fucking more than ready for that damn belt. You got people in that promotion that are more than ready for that belt. Chet Sterling's been ready for over a year. Is Chet is and, and here's the thing, they've built it up so much with Trevor doing this two year title reign, that whoever he does drop it to, whoever he does drop it to, we're always going to compare anybody who has that belt to Trevor Lee. Now that's the stigma, that's the measuring stick now. And is anybody ever going to be as good as Trevor as far as a champion goes? No. Because they've set it up that way. It's been set up this way now for two years. And you can't blame new Booker, old Booker. You can't. And people go, well, Joe, Trevor books his own stuff. Maybe you should just blame Trevor. Maybe a portion of the blame does go on Trevor. But at the end of the day, it's a Booker's job to sit there and go, look, man, this just isn't, you know, it's getting old. It's getting stale. We got to do something to freshen this up. And I thought maybe the John Schuyler thing and bringing in outside people are going to do it. But, but when they do bring in someone like an outsider like John Schuyler, who's not, he's been there more than he has been in a while, granted, but he's not a CWF regular. When John Schuyler goes up against him and then after the match is over, it's, hey, it's the same thing, but with ropes. <laughs> And it is okay to compare them, but I just think that with this roster, 
the last two years. It's it's going to be tough, man. It's going to be really tough. And 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 my theory has always been, when or if Trevor ever does drop that belt, that may be the time that he has to go away and get signed exclusively somewhere. That's none of my business if he does or doesn't, to be honest with you. But I always said that, you know, from the start of this whole thing, that if he ever goes away, if he ever drops that belt, that's it. We probably won't see him for a long time. And do you, do? here's a question for you guys. When he drops that belt, should we see him for a while? And who does he lose it to? People out shouting, you know, Kane, Chet, Eric Andrews, Eric Royal. I think it's got to be something new. The problem is, and going back to, you know, I'll, I'll give you, a, I'll play devil's advocate on the somebody outside the promotion standpoint that uh, Goon Recruiter says, they've built it up so much that he's ran through everybody but Chet. He's ran through everybody but Chet and Kane. I mean, and he can even say he ran through Kane because it came down to him and Kane in the Rumble. But he's beaten Eric Royal. He's beaten Roy Wilkins. He's beaten Eric Andrews. He's beaten Ethan Alexander Sharp. Trevor is a big draw. You've seen as well as I have how different, how different, how many tickets sell. Well, that's their problem, though, man. They need to groom somebody else in that spot. And I do, I think, oh, and, and if anybody throws up the fact that it's because Trevor's on impact, no, sorry, no. Trevor's been a draw in that building since before impact was even a thought in his head, probably. It doesn't matter if he's only watched WWE in the past. I think it's telling. If he's only watched WWE in the past and he's went to two indie shows and said, hey, this is the same, that's pretty telling. To me, it is. Have the other, you know, and then with him running through everybody, the other talent's momentum is gone. That roster's momentum is gone right now. Part of me wishes this damn Cronodal Cup is, shouldn't have even taken, you know, wasn't even taking place. I like the idea of it. I like paying, you know, the idea of paying homage to Don and Rocky. It's going to be a good night for everybody. Sadly, I won't be there, but it stalls the momentum, this great momentum. You know, I'm, I'll, I'll go ahead and say it. When the stuff with the, you know, former Booker went down, he had everything laid out. You could have piggybacked on that. And I don't think they have. It's just me, you know, talking out of my ass, I know, but... I'm excited. I, I didn't say it's a bad idea for the tournament, but, I mean, it just, it, it you know... Because of this tournament, you're having to throw people on the main, ro on this on this roster together, that, that and it kind of stalls their singles push. Is there any sort of thing as a push in CWF? Did I really just use that terminology? <laughs> the Jim Nasty boys aren't winning the Carnotal Cup. I am going to miss Kane and Ethan by not being there. Yeah. <laughs> You can ask uh you can ask uh, Jason. I look like a sad puppy when I when I told him I wasn't going to be there at the Cronodal Cup. I could I could make the second show, but I would I wouldn't get there till like eight o'clock at night. So I'm I'm still thinking about it. I may still make it happen, but the 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 afternoon show's out because I'm I'm gonna have to work that day. But, I mean, it's just it's just food for thought that I'm throwing out there. I know it's probably, why are you not going? Because I have to work. I Joe had to go get a job, and that job says Joe has to work on Saturdays, unfortunately. 
<laughs> Thank you, Jason. But I'll still watch it on Worldwide with you guys and do the after show. By the way, we're coming up on our on our one year anniversary of the after show. Um, I believe it's April twenty fifth will be our fifty second week, which makes it a year. Fifty two episodes, man, and I think. A little rumor is, is that the guy who started off with me, Jeff Edwards, the co my, the, my former co-host, is going to join me. He says he's been catching up with the CWF. So, he, he said he wants to join me for that. You'll be... <laughs> No, I I have to be. <laughs> I'll read it. You'll be fired again by Cronodal. You can make it. <laughs> if I get fired by Cronodal, I'll be homeless. <laughs> I'll put it that way. I'll be told to hit the road, Jack. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I wanted to go on another rant tonight, and that's about the fan base. It's about you guys. It's about you guys. This fan base is divided, man. There's still people out there bashing this shit, and I get it. All right, I'm going to go on a small, small rant. I took my good boy pill last night before I went to bed, so I'm good for probably another two hours. <laughs> but small rant here. You guys have to realize something, okay? It is now... March, late March, okay, April 1st is a Sunday, this week in wrestling guys were pretty complimentary last podcast, good, but there's people out there that are still sore that the booker, the former booker is gone. I mean, get over it. He made his bed. He's got a lie in it. He may have blocked me on Twitter, but I don't have a bad thing to say about the guy, really. It wasn't my choice to, to get rid of him. <laughs> but we got to get over it, guys. Grant leaving. That was Grant's decision. I love Grant Sawyer to death, man. Hell, part of me wishes he was back right now. In fact, Grant, if you're listening to this, why don't you show your ass up at the Cronodo Cup and shoot some shit? But here's the thing. It's a new era. And if you're if you can't, you know, yeah, thank you, Grant. Hashtag thank you, Grant. Damn right. But here's my thing. Here it is now, three months later. Has there been some missteps? Yes. Has there been some episodes that were hard to watch? Yes. Has the booking been the same? No. But here's my thing on this, and this is probably the last time I'm going to bring this up. Okay? And again, no disrespect to Brad Stutz. No disrespect to Grant Sawyer. No disrespect to either one of them. Oh, shit. I'm not going to... Damn. Anyway, Grant... Pro okay, I'm going to read this here because this is my chat room. Grant probably doesn't want to sweep the sport at him. <laughs> That's wrong. That's wrong. It's funny, but it's wrong, okay? What are we thinking Grant for? I don't see images. The yeah, at least he should come back and give us fucking images. They aren't listening. <laughs> I don't think they are listening, and you know what? Oh, I, that's their choice. But here's the thing. I wish Grant would come back, but it doesn't look like he's going to. And that's his decision. That's his choice. He's a grown-ass man. He's entitled to make that choice. But if you can't get over the fact, and you're that butthurt about them leaving, that it makes it to where you can't watch the product anymore, then goodbye. Quit bashing it. Don't watch. 
And I hate telling people don't watch CWF because CWF needs every view they could get. They like every fan to watch them, and they should be watched, but they should also be supported at the same time. Do I have nice things to say about that promotion all the time? No. You just heard me go on a rant about how crappy the booking has been the start of the year. But I support the wrestlers that go in that ring that bust their ass for you guys each and every damn week. I support the production guys like Jesse McAllister, Randy Hendrick, Cecil Scott, Smith Garrett, even the camera guys when they don't get their shots right or whatever the case may be. Joe shooting on himself from back. Hey, I'm the first one to make an ass out of myself, and I'm also the first one to sit there and call my own ass out, okay? It's not always been sunshines and rainbows as for CW and my opinions of this promotion. But I still love it. I still go out there and support the boys. But you being butthurt because your buddies don't work there no more, so you're going to just bash the product because that's the only reason? Get over it. Get over it. Grant chose to leave, and what happened with Stutzy happened. And I'll be the first one to say, it. it's none of my business. That's just it. It's none of our business. But it got out there. <laughs> there was, you know, they, they, they had got out ahead of the story. They addressed it. They made it public, too. So, I mean, you know. Um, but come on. Get over it. So the camera shots ain't that tight no more. It's a new editor in, in the house, editing things. It's not going to be the way it was, guys. It ne probably never will be again. John Phil, Philly, she's taking what the fuck out. But, I'm, I mean, it's it's just... Josh, it's just getting tough to see, you know, and I know it's Twitter. In the grand scheme of things, does Twitter really mean shit? But, you know, my God, my God, I, you know, support the boys at least. Hell, I'm so happy that, you know, but wait, who's bashing? I'm not going to call people out. They know who they are. It has died down a lot. I will say that. But I was going to go on that huge rant last week, and I had to stop myself, man, because, you know, I, I still like... Hell, I'll, I'll put it to you this way. I was the one that even sat there and asked after everything that went down, is there a possibility that Stutz could return? I asked somebody with the promotion that. I'm not going to reveal the answer. It's none of y'all's business. But I think that we, you know, the fan base is divided fan base. These people who are clinging on because their friends ain't with them no more. Look, the promotion was there long before they came along. So that's my little rant on the thing. I'm not going to talk about it no more on this show. It's getting to the point where we I have to address it almost every week because some idiot on Twitter has to sit there and or, or on a podcast on another podcast has to sit there and do it. You know when when you know shouldn't have to. We should be well moved on by now. It should be dust in the mirror by now. You know. Dust in the wind, as that song says. Anyway. <sighs> CWF Men Atlantic presents the... Uh, Second annual Carnotal Brothers. No one listens to podcasts. <laughs> okay. The second annual Don and Rocky Carnotal uh, Brothers Cup 
Don and Rocky will be at the Sportatorium. They have uh, two events on April the 14th. The first event is a matinee event at about 3.30 bell time. The second event is a 7.30 bell time. Well, if I get off at 7, I would get there by 8. I'd only be missing a half an hour of the show. I might make that second show. We'll see. It's still a couple weeks away. So back to Kane stepping on Kane's heat. <laughs> Ethan's okay so uh, it's going to be a, a really good night the gym nasty boys are still scheduled to be there you got you know teams like Ethan and Kane you got uh, I'm curious to see if the all-stars have a, a team in the cup this year even autocorrect is thrown off by Ethan <laughs> But anyway, it's going to be a really good night. And then um, April 21st, they have an RGL event. April 28th is Good Vibrations. May 12th is Our House. And then May 19th is their next RGL event titled The World is Yours. So you got, okay, I see what they did here. The good, the next episode, Good Vibrations, Our House, and The World is Yours. Somebody was going through their iTunes playlist when they were naming these shows. I'll, I'll probably be at the second event. If I could get away with calling out, I might be at both of them. Anyway. I'm not going to be fired, though. I'm tempted to keep this job. It's a nice, cushy job with the uh, fruit company. So, I'm working with a bunch of fruit. You should see my training class. Anyway, that's enough for me tonight. <laughs> Oh, man, that's the worst part of the job is, is the customers and then the people that you train with. Oof. They ain't got the sense God gave a mule, I swear. See, fired. <laughs> I didn't say fired. I'm not going to get myself fired from this one. So are you, so you are a fruit, bo fruit booty. What the fuck? All right, that's it. I've gotten into myself, myself into enough trouble. I'm sure I'll hear about it on Twitter from Lee Valiant and McAllister will post more memes of me and all that good stuff, which I'll be honest, again, people know I'm the first one to laugh at myself. I'm the first one to make fun of myself. When I saw that picture last night, I was watching, this is going to sound mighty white of me, I was watching that Biggie and Tupac show that, uh, that USA does after SmackDown, which is a really good freaking show if you ain't watching it. I am a fan of rap music, by the way. Um, the meme was hilarious. It was. Um, but I'm sitting there watching the Biggie and Tupac show, uh, uh, The Unsolved, and um, I start busting out laughing. And um, if you get fired, you have to cancel the after show. I, unless, they, unless I can find an outlet under a bridge to plug all my shit in, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um, I start laughing my ass off, and my girlfriend's like, what are you doing? What are you laughing at? And I turned the computer around and showed her the damn picture, and she starts busting out laughing, too. She's like, that's your I don't give a fuck face. And I'm like, no, they think I'm staring at what's-her-face's ass. <laughs> and then she starts laughing her again. So it brought some much-needed laughter to my day, that picture did. It really did. So whoever made that, thank you very much. I'm the first, again... I'm the first one to laugh at myself. I'm, I'm the first one to call myself out on my own shit, even, you know, as I did tonight. But I know, stupid Mark Joe White laughing at his own goddamn memes. What the hell? <laughs> on that note, we're going to get out of here, everybody. You can follow me on Twitter at Joe Pillar to Post. If you would like to become a Patreon supporter, $1 a month gets you everything. The link below in the description. I got to get on that Patreon stuff. There will be an audio version of the after show going up on that probably tomorrow evening after I get off work. So, anyway, everybody have a good evening, and we'll see you at the Sportatorium.